Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, thyroid today, and uh, we, I, I, when I look around me, I feel like there's an epidemic of thyroid issues, especially among women, increasingly among children, and and men as well. Uh, people are suffering a lot. So there's a there's a few terms that everybody should know when you're thinking about thyroid, and the first term is myxedema. Anyone know what myxedema is? Oh, that's the swelling of the yes, face. Yes, yes. The it's the swelling of the face, swelling of the body, uh, swelling underneath your eyes, here, jowls swelling. Like bags under the eyes? Or? Bags under the eyes, oh. the preorbital fat masses, suborbital fat masses, uh, or myxedemic, uh, swelling over here, uh, swelling in your belly, swelling in your legs. But this swelling is very, very different than swelling from water getting into your body, into your body's tissues. This is a substance which is like a goo. It's like your snot. It's like a mucopolysaccharide, which is a gooey substance. And what they did was they did their first autopsy of a hypothyroid woman back in the 1880s. And when they looked at the swelling, when they sliced it open, her leg, which was very, very swelled, they discovered that water didn't pop out of it. So water did not pop out of the swelling. It was like a jello. It was like a jello. And so what the thyroid is doing is it's causing your tissues to exude a substance that's like jello. And that substance starts, it, you typically start to see myxedema, mild, moderate, or severe, starting from the face down. So the first thing you'll see is swelling over here. Then you see swelling under here because gravity pulls this gel down here. You might see swelling in the legs. But this is very different swelling than the swelling of lymphedema that is from either venous insufficiency or removal of your lymph nodes and so on. So that's myxedema. There's a thing called myxedema coma, which is if you're severely hypothyroid, which is you have no thyroid to speak of, uh, you get it going to a coma because all your body's organs get bloggy. Your heart gets boggy, your intestines get boggy, your brain gets boggy, and then you die. And that's called myxedema coma. It happens typically in women after their sixth decade of life. And so 60 plus, it doesn't happen, although now, Earlier and earlier, you're seeing severe cases of hypothyroidism. Eighty percent of these cases occur in women. Can anybody guess why myxedema occurs more in women? Has something to do with the period? Uh, that too, yeah. So partially, indirectly, uh, it is to do with women requiring a lot more thyroid. Women requiring a lot more iodine because of their reproductive system. So. Uh, your breasts need 10 times more iodine than your thyroid does. Do you know that? So pour iodine on your breasts for better reproductive health at all ages. So what's happening in puberty is women are growing breasts, they're growing reproductive, hormone, hormone, uh, reproductive organs, and they're sucking up their iodine and that there's very little left for their thyroid. So women and, 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 fertil and reproduction, your child takes up your iodine, your thyroid in the first trimester. So there's a huge demand on a woman's thyroid and on her iodine. So I would say nearly everyone I know today needs iodine supplementation because we are uh, bathing in fluoridated water, we're drinking chlorinated and fluorinated wa fluoridated water, we're sitting on couches that have what in them? Anyone guess? Bromine. Bromines. They have bromide in them. And the breads. And the breads, the flowers are all brominated. Back in the early 1900s, someone had this bite. They used to iodinize bread flowers. And then they said, oh no, iodine is not good. And we're giving it to them through their iodized salt. Let's replace it with bromine. And all the bread got brominated. And the atomic weight of the other halogens is much smaller than that of iodine. So fluorine is about 19, bromine is 
chlorine is 35, 36, bromine is uh, over 70, and iodine is 127-ish atomic weight. And they all displace and replace, they bind to your iodine receptors if there isn't enough iodine in your body. Fukushima, the radioactive <coughs> iodine, you know, the Chernobyl, we all were affected by all these things. The radioactive iodine is going to displace your regular iodine, and you're going to be hyperthyroid. So a lot of these are caused by environmental toxins, uh, depleted soils, and displacement with fluoride, bromide, and fluoride. So is, is the bromine, um, is that in what's called like the Scotch Guard? The yes, stuff? yes. Computers, brand new cars, <coughs> Scotch Guard, <coughs> several, several parts per million of bromide. And it's very, very toxic. So people who are hypothyroid should never buy new cars or new computers. You want to buy, <coughs> you want to buy used stuff, always. Well, I, 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 I took care of a cat that almost died because the owners had gotten the couch that had um, mm -hmm. Scotch Guard on Scotch it. Guard on it. And the cat would lick mm -hmm. the oh, cushions no. Oh, no. and it almost died. Oh. So it's so toxic. Yeah. How did they finally figure that out? Pet blood test. Oh. Of the, of, for the cat? Like a... Oh, yeah. The vet. And so early in your life, you got iodine from your mom. You got some iodine from your mom. But as these things accumulate in your body, in your sixth decade of life, you become fifth, sixth, fourth, fifth. You become iodine deficient. And that's when women develop goiters, when they're iodine deficient. And when they develop goiters, guess what the doctors tell you? They develop nodules on their on their thyroid. Oh, they got your thyroid. Yeah. Remove the thyroid. Remove the thyroid. A better solution is to give the person iodine so that the thyroid doesn't expand to try and um, expand. I had head. a tumor on my Did ear you, have a tumor? When yeah. I, you know, and when I came out of surgery, I thought I would have a little scar here, and I was just surprised when it was all the way across wow. my neck. They took the whole thyroid out? Yeah, they took wow. the whole thyroid, wow. thyroid out. And when I saw this, you know, uh, right across my neck, I would have said, well, really, if I had known you were going to do that, I would have asked you to take a few tucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you were at it. Yeah. You didn't laugh at all. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. Uh, about 90 plus percent of the uh, nodules or tumors that, that you have on your thyroid are benign. Uh, yeah, but they take them out and... By doing so, they're taking the thyroid out, and now you're left without thyroid function. You know, there might have been a, a period where they were doing that a lot, because one of the women who lives across the street from me in, in, in College Court uh, had been a nurse at UCSF. Mm -hmm. And I told her when I was 40, so about 45 years ago, 50 years ago, I had uh, my thyroid with one of She said, oh, you know, I was a nurse in the thyroid department. She <laughs> said, she said I, I might have been, you know, there in, in when they did it. And she said, they were doing a lot of thyroid operations in those days. And I thought, hmm. I mean, that's like now they're doing a lot of gallbladder exactly. operations. Exactly. It's sort of like the yeah. cachet. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, more like cash flow thing. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big revenue stream. And women are particularly vulnerable to removal of their uterus, their thyroid, their gallbladder. You should read a book called uh, Male Practice. Oh, it's a no. book called Male Practice, oh. and they've written how doctors um, intimidate women in particular. Because women are faithful doctor visitors. Unlike men, they yes. go visit their doctor for their annual, their quarterly, and all that. And so they have huge opportunities to do things to these yeah. women. Um, and, and it's intimidating to tell your doctor, no, I'm not going to take, I'm going to get my thyroid removed or, or whatever else removed. But every woman should actually read that, read that book. Uh, but by the time you get to 50, 60, a lot of bad things have happened to your thyroid. You might have mercury in your teeth. You might have cadmium and nickel in your thyroid.
thyroid is right underneath your amalgams. And so all this mercury toxicity is going to hit your thyroid. Uh, your thyroid detoxifies uh, with, with a, an enzyme called glutathione peroxidase because it's very critical for the thyroid to be doing that. And that gets gummed up because the glutathione is used up in detoxing your body from mercury. And so any kind of mouth toxicity is going to wipe out your thyroid. What does uh, Colgate total contain? Anyone know? Colgate what? Total toothpaste. Oh, toothpaste. It yeah. contains an antibiotic called triclosan, uh, which contains uh, chlor chloride, chlorine in it, and that wipes out your thyroid. Toothpaste contains fluoride, and that wipes out your thyroid. So there's a number of sort of aggressors on your thyroid the first 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And it's a toxic too. It's a toxic too, yes. Uh, more than 90% of the cases uh, that were reported of myxedema coma occur in winter. Guess why? Why would things occur in winter? Pardon me? Why, you have why would these things occur in winter? Was it like heat in this house? Yeah. You get dry, maybe? Yeah, your thyroid is basically lowering your basal metabolism. You don't have the energy to fight the cold, and so you need a lot more thyroid in winter because hormones are pulsatile. So you need less in summer, more in winter. And so people on um, exogenous thyroid hormone need to adjust their doses for summer versus winter, not necessarily based on blood tests, but based on how you feel. So you find that people with hypothyroidism get more infections in winter because their thyroid is not adequate, or pneumonia, especially infections of the lung. Uh, the lungs fill up with this mix, the mucin, the polysaccharide, and that mu mucopolysaccharide, that makes you much more susceptible to infectious, infectious diseases, NAC, tuberculosis, pneumonia, and so on. Uh, so it's associated with inter intercurrent illnesses or stressors. Any kind of stressor makes the need for a thyroid much, much higher. And you get more pulmonary infections if you're hypothyroid. Um, and so by the time you land in hospital, it's typically too late to do anything because the mortality rate in hospitals from myxedema is about 50%. And what they're going to do is they're going to inject thyroxine, up to 400 micrograms of thyroxine into you to try and re revive you. But what's happened in the meantime is you've got this uh, myxedema all over. You've got gly glycosaminoglycans, which is mucopolysaccharides, all over and into your organs. So your heart may be twice and thrice the size. Your belly might have ascites. Your intestines are gummed up and glued up with these mucopolysaccharides. So um, so what you want to do is catch it before it happens. This is the worst case. Don't worry. You're not going to get worst case, but you might be surprised how many people land up in hospital. Uh, and generally, you feel lethargy, weight gain, loss prior to getting myxedema. You get a bunch of different things. And today, we're going to do practical things, which is we're going to walk through all the symptoms of thyroid so you can decide for yourself what applies and what doesn't apply to you. Um, so you have general muscular impairment, macroglossia, thick, heavy tongue. You know, your tongue feels like it's, it's made of stone. Mm -hmm. So you have troubles talking because the tongue is filled with mucopolysaccharides. Uh, your muscles, your preorbital swelling, which is you get big bags underneath your eyes. Your lips, lips can't move. Uh, you have sleep apnea because your lungs are filled with the mucopolysaccharides. You have coarse, dry skin, fecal impaction. You get something called megacolon, which is enormous colon because you're constipated. And the, the surrounding walls of your colon are thickened by the, by the glycosaminoglycans. You get bladder problems, musculoskeletal skeletal hypertrophy, which is your muscle, the connective tissue in your muscle gets bogged with the mucopolysaccharides. And, and a simple fix for that is thyroid hormone. A very simple fix will cure it, will just cure it. 
And now we'll walk into why we are under-medicating people, even though the fix is so simple. So can we get thyroid hormone? Thyroid. The problem in today's world is, to go back into a little bit of history, back in the 70s, when did you get your thyroid removed? Uh, I was in my 40s, so it's it was in the almost 70s? 50 years ago. Okay. Were you an armor thyroid ever? No. Okay. Oh, I think for a very short time I was on some natural. I yes. had gone to some homeopathic doctor okay. for a okay. while. Okay. But he was so careless and so dirty. I mean, it was, <laughs> everything was so dirty in his office. I just couldn't, couldn't deal with that. Okay. okay. So, thyroid. Oh, and then actually, that hormone, they suddenly said to stop, to change to something else because we have. They had some problem with it, and they stopped production production for a yes. while. Yeah. Uh, so rather than do that, I just went back to Simsbury. Yes. So one of the problems that happened in the 1970s was, prior to the 1970s, there were no blood tests. So the doctor would look at you, they did clinical exams, they would say, what is your basal temperature, how do you feel, lethargy, do you have fibromyalgia, do you have uh, butterfly rashes? Do you have constipation? And from your basal metabolic rate, they would give you thyroid hormones. What happened in the 70s was they developed a gold standard. That gold standard was called the TSH test. And the doctors screamed, the doctors protested that the TSH had nothing to do with their patient's hypothyroid symptoms. They had the a range of TSH levels, but some patients were hypo and some people were not hypothyroid. So the TSH did not really express thyroid health. That happened in the 70s. A second thing that happened in the 70s was a drug called, a synthetic drug called Synthroid was developed by manufacturers. And prior to that, they would give you pig or bovine thyroid ground up. And so you would get, get this thyroid hormone that was ground up thyroid tissue from an animal. It contained T4, which is the thyroid hormone with four molecules of iodine in it. It had the T3, T2, T1, calcitonin, and the whole package that you needed for your thyroid. What they replaced it with was Synthroid, which was the T4 only. And the T4 is the inactive form of the thyroid hormone, whereas the T3 is the active form of the, of the hormone. And you need the T4, T3, T2, T1, the deiodinases, the calcitonin, in order for your thyroid to function. And there's a daisy chain effect. You, you have a hormone in your brain called the thyroid-stimulating hormone that instructs your thyroid to make thyroid hormone, which is the inactive thyroid. That thyroid hormone goes to your liver, it goes to your heart, it goes to your lungs, and is grabbed by the cells, and then the cells make that hormone active into a form called the T3. So they knock off one iodine. In the process, you could be missing the deiodinases. You could be missing enzymes anywhere along the chain, but the TSH test only checks for the TSH. So many women, especially the four, huh? It only tests for the four. They only test for the- it only tests for the TSH. Uh, which is not even a thyroid hormone. Yeah. It's the precursor. So the TSH test has very little to do with how your thyroid function is actually operating. You mean it's not a thyroid hormone because that's inactive? Is that what you mean? Uh, the T4 is inactive, yeah. the T3 is active, yeah. and the T2, T1. And the, and so the TSH measures the T4? No, it? it doesn't even measure the T4. Oh, oh. It measures a brain hormone that stimulates your thyroid to make T4. Oh, I see. And so between the brain, your thyroid, and your liver, there are a hundred different steps and hundreds of enzymes involved that can impair thyroid function. And so the TSH test is next to useless. So why do they still use it? Um, they use it, and a millions of women today, a 
about, I would say, 70% of the population of women out there is hypothyroid because they're being under-medicated. Uh, because the TSH test says that's so. So then they came out with this hormone, which was just one hormone out of the four or five that the body needs and one ingredient out of the 20 ingredients that the body needs. And so, so prior to the TSH test, we, women were given two to 300 micrograms of thyroid hormone. Guess what happened after the TSH test? They started getting 80 micrograms max, 70 to 80. The same people who were working, running around, having children, had a lot of energy to do their daily jobs on 300 micrograms of thyroid hormone, got a replacement of 80, and guess what it did to them? Slowed them down. Huh? Slowed them down. Slowed them down substantially. Slowed them down substantially. And a new disease called fibromyalgia was born. These were women who had severe muscle aches. These were women who got constant coughs, colds, and pneumonial infections. These were women who had this butterfly rash on their face all the time that got diagnosed as lupus, an autoimmune disease, but which was in fact uh, the early stages of myxedema, where the goo, the, the uh, mucopolysaccharides collect in your skin and your connective tissue. These were women, if you pinch them, you know how when you pinch skin, this is your skin being pinched, but their skin was so infiltrated with it the goo that it would stay up, or you would not be able to grab a thin fold of skin. It would be a huge, thick fold of skin. Yeah. On but I thought legs. that was a lack of water if, if you, you know, that you need more water. So normally, if you pinch, women tend to have fat under their skin, which will make it a big, a bit bigger. Yeah. But if you pinch your skin, it should not be a two-inch pinch. It should be a lot less than two inches. Yeah. And so that is when your connective tissue is infiltrated with myxedemic fluids. And so those were the sort of the tests. And so these were women who were hale and hearty before the TSH gold standard was developed. And then after that, doctors would get penalized if they, uh, if they prescribed too much thyroid hormone because they would say, hey, the range is, they, the, the range was described as 0.5 to 8. So it was a very wide range. It's like saying a human being, a normal human being is anywhere from 2 feet to 6 feet tall. Guess what? It's abnormal for a 40-year-old human being to be 2 feet tall. It's, it's true that that heights range from two feet to six feet, but what kind of context are you using? So the range for the TSH was one to like eight. Then the American Society Clinical of Clinical Endocrinologists protested and they got it reduced from what, one to four, but it's still a very wide range and it doesn't tell you anything. And so millions of women have suffered and then all these diseases start happening your cholesterol metabolism is governed by your thyroid. And what happens? The first thing that happens is your gallbladder gets removed. Because now your liver, which excretes bile, which is 90% cholesterol, is no longer functioning. So cholesterol is accumulating in your body. And your cholesterol levels are, say, maybe 150 to 200 to 250. All of a sudden, they shoot up to 2, 3, 400 over a period of time when you're medication got reduced. And so cholesterol is accumulating in your body. You have gallstones, gall problems. Your uterus, which needs iodine, because you're probably iodine deficient, not, not T4 deficient, is now all of a sudden getting fibroids and precancerous cells, and your uterus gets removed. Uh, you get breast cancer, because your breasts need a lot of iodine and you don't have enough because it got replaced. So all of a sudden, you start to get diseases like fibromyalgia, lupus, extreme pain, Charlie horses, cramps. You throw your backs. You throw your backs. A lot of backs get thrown because the muscle gets boggy with, with the mucopolysaccharides. You get cancer of the breast. You get cancer of the uterus. Women become infertile. We have a lot of 
PCOS in young women who are already hypothyroid from the time they're 13 and 14 because they got metal toxicity and the metals destroy your thyroid. So for women in particular, this has been one of the biggest curses in the last 50 years. And you get neurologic psychosis, restlessness, delirium. You know those women who have children and then proceed to drown them. Remember the case of that woman? Postpartum. Postpartum depression. That is hypothyroidism when your thyroid doesn't have enough iodine, enough support, or enough thyroid hormone. Um, narcotics and drugs suppress your thyroid. Things like morphine, painkillers, acid reflux medications, antidepressants, antipsychotics, or anti Bone fracture medications, they contain fluoride, chloride, bromides that suppress your thyroid, you gain weight, you develop heart disease, and many people have massive congestive heart failure as a result. So hypothyroidism has been known since 1875 when this guy by the name of William Gull in London first described the symptoms so there's actually a 1888 report with 200 pages that describes every symptom, and I'll try and get it for us so you can you can read it. Every symptom of hypothyroidism. Um, a couple of years later, a, a doctor by the name of William Ord conducted his first autopsy of a woman who died of hypothyroidism, and that's when he discovered he sliced the leg, a very swollen leg, and he expected it's tough to pop out of it but it was solid jello-like mass. And that's why instead of calling it lymphedema, they call it myxedema. Myx meaning mucin. Mucin meaning the stuff that comes out of your nose and all that. Um, in 1888, uh, these were described in the Clinical Society of London's 200-page report. Um, and all the way through 1970, women were being treated with thyroid extract from bovine and porcine thyroid, and they were in relatively good shape. In the 70s uh, began what I think of as the extreme mistreatment of women who were under-medicated and went on to develop a whole bunch of diseases ranging from cancer to heart disease. What are the symptoms of hypo? Constipation. A third of people with hypothyroidism have Lifelong. Some of them, I know people who've had constipation from the time they were five years old. So, so someone knew that they were hypo or they were hypothyroid from the age of five. They suffered from five to fifteen. Finally, someone figured out that they were hypo. Gave them some medications. It came the seventies. The medication was cut to a third, and and they developed something called megacolon. So constipation, fecal impaction. And what all this is doing is if you don't poop, your colon gets filled with fecal matter, gets filled with fecal matter, gets filled with fecal matter, and it becomes megaplastic, meaning it becomes huge. And, and then what happens? Can you guess what happens then when you go to the doctor? It gives you something to they remove part of the... Oh, yes. Doctors in the United States since the 70s have been removing... 18 to 20 inches of colon of in colon. women who have hypothyroidism mm -hmm. and who had mega colon mm -hmm. and by telling them oh you're you're born with a big colon no you're not born with a big colon people have colons that are very long that can digest food just fine it was the symptom of hyperplasia and so now these people have, can't are constipated and don't have a colon uh, so uh, it's it's very cool uh, there's a lot of inflammatory bowel disease, megacolon, gallbladder congestion because your cholesterol is not moving. Your liver tissue has mucopolysaccharides in it. And they have slightly elevated liver enzymes. If you have slightly elevated liver enzymes, take it seriously. And if you have gallstones or gallbladder problems, suspect hypothyroidism. They have irritable bladder. So really, any tissue that covers your organs and when it gets boggy, you're going to have troubles with that tissue, whether it's your lung, your heart, uh, your kidneys, your intestines, 
your brain, and so on. Uh, there's depression, uh, bipolar, sorry, didn't spell it right, schizophrenia, weight gain, increasing high cholesterol levels. Everyone has a natural level of cholesterol, whether it's 200, 253. But if you become hypothyroid all of a sudden, you find that your cholesterol levels go up a lot without any change in diet. What do they do when your cholesterol levels go up? Your seven. Yes. Your cholesterol goes. Exactly. 95% of the people who are given cholesterol lowering drugs would do better with thyroid medication. Their cholesterol levels would go down naturally. Um, bradycardia. Bradycardia is low heartbeat because now you have a um, hyperplasic heart. In hypothyroidism, the heart doubles and sometimes triples in size. Cardiac output goes down, stroke volume goes down, your heartbeats lessen, your ejection fraction goes down, you now are diagnosed with congestive heart failure when the problem was low thyroid medication. Uh, sometimes there's tachycardia. Now people will say, you know, am I hypo or am I hyper? I had, I had bradycardia, which is low heartbeat, and then all of a sudden I got high heartbeats, I had low blood pressure, and now I have high blood pressure. Can anyone guess what's going on in this hypothyroid person? What other endocrine systems involved here? When you're close to death, under stress, Your metabolism, or something, that, or that's something to do with your metabolism. Your adrenals. What is happening now is you're so hypothyroid that your body, body's emergency mechanism is taking over, and your body's adrenal glands release cortisol. And all of a sudden, whereas your heartbeat was 50 beats per minute, it goes up to 200. Your blood pressure goes up to 200. So there's this. Confusion among people, does hypothyroidism cause low or high, depends on where you are in your disease. So if it is in the early stages, you're going to have low. Latter stages, your adrenals go into emergency mode. And so, so once you, or the adrenals get fatigued from doing that, and, and then the adrenals get worn out as well. What is cortisol? Cortisol is a hormone that is released by these walnut-shaped organs that sit on top of your kidney. And this is the stress or stress hormone, stress uh, response. So if you're ever under stress, the body instructs the adrenals to release cortisol uh, and adrenaline, which puts <coughs> all your blood into your extremities to make you run faster. Uh, and it kind of shuts down supply, blood supply to your organs. And so your organs get so if you do that forever, you're going to have, and that sunshine is parasympathetic. <laughs> yes. So the key in life is not to panic, not to let your cortisol take over, and to treat your hypothyroidism before it gets to emergency mode. So cortisol is the hormone that's released by your adrenal glands. And, and in the last stages, that will happen. People will get very malignant blood pressure, high heartbeats, um, very bad headaches. Why do you get migraines? Because your head swells up. Hmm. Children <coughs> who have vaccine damaged have uh, encephalopathy of their heads, which is head swelling. If you have metal toxicity, you can get head swelling. Likewise, hypothyroidism causes your nuisance, your mucopolysaccharides will cause edema in your head. And people with hypo get constant, frequent, many of them headaches with auras, migraines that last for a long time. So if you have those, consider testing your thyroid function. Uh, infections, TB, MAC, MAC, which is a non-infectious TB, because in the old days, in the 1800s and the 1500s, there were no antibiotics. So people with low thyroid got TB and they died. So they were wiped out of the population. In the 1900s, as antibiotics came, these uh, low thyroid people with tuberculosis survived and 
went on to get cancer in their lungs instead. Or the new TB, which is the, the you know, the kind, the non-infectious kind, but it's called MAC, MAC Mycobacterium avium complex, which is not infectious, but, you know, your lungs are infected with this, t uh, with this tuberculosis. Yes, sir. Is there a way we can turn down some of these lights? Sure, go for it. Turn down the lights, and then you might want to shut the door, too. Well, I, I mean, I want to see what works, though. Sure, sure. Um, a lot of people get nosebleeds. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Right on yeah, top of the yeah. All these uh, tube lights are off-gassing mercury. And that mercury we're inhaling, and it's it goes into your brain. So you want to avoid um, tube lights in your life if possible. That works great, essentially. Would you turn that on? Um, <coughs> um, I think if I turn that off, it shuts off. She might object, yes, yes. No, no, it might shut them all off. Oh, oh, okay. I okay. can see. Okay. No, I meant, I meant the one in the other room. Oh, no, it's too dark, too dark, too dark. So that one was on the same switch. Yeah. Okay. I'll, show you, I'll show you what I'll do, though. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Super. Super. <laughs> How many people do you know have frequent nosebleeds? There's a lot of bleeding and bruising because your blood vessels get mucin in them and they shrink and narrow and uh, you, your uh, clotting mechanism gets impaired. So there's a lot of nosebleeds. Um, fibromyalgia, classic symptom of hypothyroidism, chronic fatigue syndrome, for which Either the doctor is going to prescribe um, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-pain meds, um, or they're going to say it's all in your head. How many women do we know who are bedridden from fibromyalgia who, who are not getting respite or relief because their hypothyroidism is inadequately treated? Infertility, a lot of infertility because you're Reproductive organs are very thyroid function, thyroid needing. Um, fibroids, uterine hyperplasia. So you have almost this, this chain of events that happens in a woman in her 20s. She had a couple of kids. Her thyroid is wrung out. There's no iodine in the water. Lo and behold, she gets fibroids in her uterus. Then they pull her fibroids out and her uterus out. Uh, then her... Thyroid gets enlarged, or there are nodules on her thyroid. Then they put the, pull the thyroid out. Then her liver gets impaired, and the gallbladder collects gallstones, and they pull the gallbladder out. So now her digestion, she has lost one. And then she can't have bowel movement, so they pull her colon out. And they treat the infections with antibiotics, and you get cancer. Or, or heart disease, or they have congestive heart failure when the heart, and that's all end stage. That's all very end stage. Um, the signs are swollen skin, puffy face, swollen fingers. If you have swollen fingers, watch out. Eye bags, bags under your eyes, belly. Uh, even though you're eating well, you might be eating keto, but you still have swelling in your belly. That could be ascites in your belly. Sleep apnea. Uh, you're Morning body temperatures are generally under 97.8. If you wake up in the morning and your armpit temperature is under 97.8, you probably have low metabolism and you're a good candidate for thyroid medication. Uh, people frequently object to thyroid hormones, but let me tell you, thyroid hormone is a lot safer than morphine, than antipsychotics, then chemotherapy, radiation, etc. And it's one small thing that'll change the way you feel in the course of a person's person's life. So everyone should invest in a little thermometer that'll help you check your morning temperatures. Women consume 10x more iodine in their breasts. So use Lugol's iodine liberally. Uh, 
put it on your breast. If you can do a test. You put blue balls here, and if it disappears in a few hours, that's a rough test that it got absorbed into your body. Uh, but you can judge from a lot of your symptoms if you're thyroid deficient. So women need to replete themselves with, with thyroid, especially if you grew up in the Midwest, the goiter belt, where it, which is the most iodine deficient soil in the entire world almost. So kids that grew up in the goiter belt came out of mothers who were hypothyroid and came out of the gate with uh, compromised metabolism. So they need the thyroid. So if you get bluegills, you, can, you don't have to take it uh, orally. You can just rub it on to uh, see you whether could, you need it. Uh, no, first. you can rub it first, but in a very hypothyroid person, you do need to ingest yeah. it. But rub it on your on your nipples; they absorb iodine. Uh, rub it on your skin. Rub it on your belly. Uh, but I would say, if you're hypothyroid, try eating iodine until you reach the point where you start to get symptoms of hyperness, which will be a pretty long time. The Japanese eat 20 milligrams of iodine per day in their diet, and the US RDA is 200 micrograms, which is a fraction of what you need for good thyroid health. And any plants that are not raised organically have NPK, so they don't have micronutrients. The soils are depleted. So between the depleted soils, between vaccines, between fluorinated, fluoridated water, between drugs that are fluoridated, chlorinated, between the low salt fattish diet. How many women went on low to no salt diets? Hypothyroidism, so you don't have enough stomach acids to even digest some of those things. Because hypothyroidism causes hyponatremia, which is low, low sodium. And so you really need to replete with salt if you're hypo. Um, and so breasts consume a lot of thyroid. Hypothyroidism typically kicks off in puberty when you're developing breasts, and your breasts uptake a lot of iodine. Um, extreme tiredness, weight gain, puffy, puffiness. It's the child who cannot get up in the morning. They're growing fast, they can't get up in the morning, whereas when they were younger, they used to be a ball of energy. You gotta suspect something. Uh, there are goiter bells across the world. The Austrian Alps, the Himalayas, the Swiss Alps, the Rockies, the Midwest, the Great Lakes states. These are goiter bells, and you want to be especially conscious. Don't eat iodized salt just because it contains iodine. You should be eating unrefined sea salt, which contains 80 minerals that you need for your thyroid to work. And in addition, you eat iodine separately or eat sea salt. I think iodized salt has sugar in it, doesn't it? Oh, it has so many uh, ingredients that are very toxic. It has fillers and uh, things that make it run better and so on. Uh, your fetal requirements. In the first trimester, the child is sucking out the mother's iodine, stop using her thyroid hormone. And women, what happens when a woman is deficient in thyroid? Can you guess? Well, she starts having getting tired and, yeah. and yeah. her metabolism in the first trimester slows down. She gains a lot of weight because now her thyroid's not working. So, so which is why old wives, the old um, midwives, used to say you mustn't gain weight in the first trimester of pregnancy. That's dangerous because you don't have enough thyroid. You gained weight because your thyroid got depressed. You would not have gained weight in the first trimester if you had. Uh, if you were repleted with thyroid and iodine. However, mm -hmm. in our day and age, if you gain a lot of weight at the beginning, doctors say, oh, you better not eat so much. And eat oh, yes, which diet. is the worst. Yes, yes, yes. That is something women need to watch out for because doctors will put you on a diet, which is a calorically restricted diet, and a low-fat, low-salt diet, which will have very few helpers for your thyroid. And you will have definitely have a baby that's thyroid deficient and what is the biggest cause of mental retardation in the world today? Iodine deficiency. Yeah. Iodine deficiency. Iodine. Cretinism across the world is one of the biggest causes of mental retardation in children. So fetal requirements are very high so when a mom is pregnant you want to fill her up with Lugol's iodine, seaweed, good fats, whatever she'll eat, lots of proteins. 
she will not gain weight on a high fat, moderate protein, or pretty high protein diet. But she will gain weight on a carbohydrate only diet. Because carbohydrates cause insulin to be released, and insulin causes you to retain water, and it suppresses your thyroid. So the hormones are working in an orchestra, and the master conductor is you and how you eat. As far as um, symptoms go, I, I guess you're still. Yes. Because I remember you saying something um, about the hair on legs yes. and yes. underarms. I'm and, going through that. Okay. Yes, thank That's you. exactly right. So, for the common man who is endocrinologist, tells them, hey, no problem, you're within limits, you know, you're within the range, you don't have a problem, and yet you get up in the middle of the night, every day, morning, your legs swell up, or night, your legs swell up, you have puffy eyes, you have swelling in your hands. So, these are the symptoms you want to watch out for swollen skin. So, if you're puffy faced, jowls, if you have developed jowls, so leonine jaw, it's not a square jaw of great character. It could frequently be hypothyroidism. Swollen fingers, if the rest of your body is thin, relatively thin, and your fingers are swollen. Eye bags, belly, organs that are hyperplasic. So if you do an MRI or something and they say, oh, you have an enlarged heart, suspect thyroid before you go in for heart medications or surgery. If your basal metabolic rate is low, as judged by the basal body temperatures, if your morning temps are under 97.8, you are very likely hypothyroid. And if it's much less than 97.8, you're very likely very, very hypothyroid, and you want to get on iodine, selenium, zinc, and thyroid. Um, and the acid test is hormone replacement therapy. So if you treat that person with hormones and all of a sudden they start growing hair, that means they were hypothyroid. It worked. You said uh, iodine, zinc, uh, selenium. Selenium. Selenium is a part of the deiodinase enzymes. So uh -huh. very, very critical. And you said one other. There were four. Uh, the iodine, selenium, zinc, and then thyroid hormone. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Now, you're saying that the hair won't grow back, mm -hmm. but I remember you commenting about someone having a lot of hair. Uh, that's a different problem as okay. well. That's insulin. That's a problem of too much insulin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank when you. you get mustaches and beards, that's a problem of too much insulin, too many carbohydrates in your diet that suppress your estrogen and that, you know, in, cause an imbalance between testosterone and estrogen and progesterone. Okay. Thank you. Uh, liver. Liver gets congested. What happens in the liver? Anyone take a guess? When is it? Uh, the same Liver thing, yeah. Oh. The, oh, in, in, in hypothyroid, the same thing that's happening everywhere else happens in the liver, which is that there are tracts going through your liver, but they get congested with the nuisance. So it becomes less able to do its job of detoxification and making your food. And so the gall liver gets congested, gallbladder gets congested, your liver enzymes are high-ish. Cholesterol levels rise as your bile secretion goes down because you're gumming up your works uh, and you're not digesting. So your peristalsis, your gut is not moving, which causes a huge number of problems for just nutrients. You're not getting nutrients or you're getting toxins retained in your body. And again, these symptoms improve with treatment. Hypoglycemia. These are the people whose liver is so congested from the nuisance, and this happens early, uh, their glycogen. So when you're not eating, your liver is giving you the glucose to survive and thrive. And what it's doing is it's got a substance, which is a bunched up set, set of molecules of glucose called glycogen. So there's about, you know, a, a, a handful of glycogen in your liver, but it doesn't convert to glucose quickly enough. So come lunchtime, these are the children who fall unconscious. These are the women who start becoming very irritable if they don't get food because they're hypoglycemic. So the liver is not converting uh, glycogen to glucose fast enough and they constantly, and then they have loss of consciousness, they get violent, there's bizarre behavior. And so I would recommend the insulin tolerance test for this as well. But consider your thyroid, check your thyroid. Heart, Cor congestive heart failure, 
you will see in congestive heart failures, people have high levels of TSH right before they get a heart attack. I have seen levels of 9 and 18, uh, and, and, and at that level, doctors will prescribe thyroid, but get to it before that happens. Get to it before that happens. And this is congestive heart failure is nothing but your heart, the pericardial uh, membrane of your heart getting filled with mucopolysaccharides, making it inefficient. You get dry skin, you get fatigue, you go to your doctor and you're 60 something and they say, hey, it's age. Let me put you on a statin and let me put you on nitroglycerin or something. You have low heart beat, low BP. Your heart is infiltrated with the mucin. And how do we know that? This guy by the name, the father of all thyroid research, Broda Barnes, had a collection of patients that he followed for a 20 year period. These are hypothyroid patients. And he expected that they would get heart disease at the same rate as the general population because heart disease has nothing to do with the thyroid, right? And so he followed the Framingham study. Um, in that quorum or that cohort of patients, he would have expected 74 heart attacks if he went by the national statistics. Guess how many heart attacks he had? He had four heart attacks. So it was 1 20th the rate of heart attacks in well-treated patients uh, with thyroid hormone was 1 20th of the national statistics. So thyroid health is very, very connected to heart health. Very important. Lungs, the same thing. Fluid accumulates in your lung. People with hypothyroidism have a constant cough that won't go away. Yes, won't go away. It is edema, mexedema in your lungs. And what happens is come winter time, thyroid levels go down further and the, the lungs are not able to function as well. And so these are people that succumb to pneumonia, to flus, to pulmonary infections. And what do the doctors tell you to do in winter? Instead of master tonic, they're telling you to do something else. Stay away from things like butter and cream. That too? Yeah. Something else. To take flu shots. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes. Which have 25 micrograms of mercury, which is very toxic to your thyroid. See, the three of us sitting here wouldn't even <laughs> think would know. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And so what the flu shot is doing is it increases your chances of non-respiratory infections by not one time, not two, two times, not three times, seven and a half times. It increases your chances of landing in hospital, getting hospital infections, and dying of something called iatrogenic illness. Everyone know what that means? What's an iatrogenic illness? Iatros? Caused by the germs in the hospital? Yes, something that's caused by medical or doctor error, yeah. which could be germs in the hospital, misdiagnosis, a scalpel left behind in your belly, the wrong breast removed, etc. More people in the United States die from iatrogenic deaths, 800,000 plus, than from any other disease yeah. cancer, heart disease, the flu, pneumonia. So don't land in hospitals. Whatever you do, don't land in a hospital. And it's not just the doctors that are recommending the flu shots. Everywhere you go, if you walk past a pharmacy or if you act like I, I picked up something from my neighbor at the Safeway store, they have all these buttons that you can wear saying, you know, get your flu shot free. Free, right? Free. Yeah. Free buttons. It yeah. is just, yes. Well, people look at me as if I'm crazy when I say I haven't had a flu shot in about 20 years because I stopped doing that. Oh, you would have been dead 20, 15 yeah, years ago. I mean, they look as if I'm just a little nuts, you know. <laughs> this is a 90-year-old nut. <laughs> so there. Right. Uh, all right, mental and neurological. You get depression. Your brain is constantly inflamed because you have edema in your brain. Per paresthesia, so weakness in your limbs, carpal tunnel. A lot of people today sitting at computers, not everybody gets it, the people who are hypothyroid do. Cerebellar ataxia, deafness, tinnitus and vertigo. 
uh, fluid accumulates in your inner ear. And that is one of the biggest causes of tinnitus, vertigo, dizziness, inner ear balance problems. This, um, if, if you've had it for 15, 20 years, you're not going to fix the tinnitus, but all progression will stop if you're on the appropriate thyroid medication. Yeah. That fluid from the inner ear causes you to have huge, huge balance issues. And then people are medicated with anti-nausea and this and that, which are absolutely the wrong medication for something that requires your inner ear to drain appropriately. Uh, delayed reaction of deep tendon reflexes. So that's the ankle test. You'd look at the ankle, you crack the ankle, and if it, if it uh, has a quick reflex, then you're not hypothyroid, but if it's a slow reflex, that's a good test. And that's the back of the ankle? That's the back of the ankle, and I'll send you the video on that, get a friend to do it for you. Um, low, am am uh, low amplitude theta and delta waves on EEG, so your sleep gets destroyed. You get sleep apnea. Um, elevated proteins in your brain, cerebrospinal fluid. So you want protein in your blood, but not in your cerebrospinal fluid. The protein leaks out along with the mucopolysaccharides, and so you have mental derangement. And a lot of the people who uh, presumably are, uh, especially in assisted living, I'm finding, people are on a bunch of different drugs for mental issues where they would probably be very active and in good mental shape if they were on um, thyroid medications. And so in some sense, people who are already on hypothyroid or thyroid medications are lucky because they at least are getting thyroid meds. There are people who are not getting thyroid meds at all, who are getting all these other diseases for which they're being treated, but which are not working. And it's progressively <clears throat> worse. Uh, schizoaffective disorders, especially schizophrenia and bipolar, hallucinations, uh, so on. Digestion. So it slows down your bowels, your elementary canal muscles get boggy and they don't work as much. You get hemorrhoids, diverticulosis, bleeding from the anus. The secretions are diminished in the digestive tract because it gets laden with mucin instead. Uh, there's more reflux, there's cancer, there's anorexia. In some cases, there's a huge increase in appetite. Um, and, and so your epistats get impaired. Sore stiff joints because you've got leaky gut now. And so stuff moves out into your joints. Memory impairment, ascites, it's a big belly. And it's not caused by fat in your belly, it's caused by swelling. Mucopolysaccharides are fluids accumulating in your belly. You have enlarged hearts, heart the verticulosis, and there's an obese type hypothyroidism as well, which is insulin, too much insulin, which suppresses your thyroid, and that's a separate matter. But for all of these, keto is the way to go. A high fat, low carbohydrate diet, moderate in protein is very, very good if you have insulin-based hypothyroidism. But digestion is fundamental to life. Your immune system, your enteric nervous system is located around your digestion. If that doesn't work, you know, you don't make serotonin, you don't make dopamine, you know, you don't have good bacteria in your body, and so it impairs your whole life. So that's digestion. Skin. Your skin is your real brain. People with hypothyroidism are far, far more likely to have skin cancers, melanomas, than just about any other cohort. Back in 1999, skin cancer was 1 in 250. In 2009, it was 1 in 76. So it's on the rise, and one of the reasons is hypothyroidism caused by environmental toxicity. A lot of your BPAs and PCBs and Roundup and the organic pollutants will impair your thyroid and will impair the workings of your skin. But what's happening in the skin, the same thing. You have the connective tissue under your skin getting gummed up with mucopolysaccharides so your skin doesn't have its immune system anymore. It can't fight infection. It cannot fight cancer. You get acne, eczema, psoriasis, vitiligo, that's white spots on your skin. Lupus. Lupus is this typical butterfly rash that, that many people have that's thought to be an autoimmune disorder, but it's really uh, related to um, hypothyroidism. You get fat pads about your collarbones. A lot of 
people get fat pads, but uh, diminished perspiration. You don't perspire as much as you used to when you were younger. Your skin turns, you get bright red here, and your skin turns kind of yellowish because you can't convert uh, beta carotene into vitamin A. That important conversion goes away. Uh, you get moles and tags. You'll find people with lots of tags on their necks that don't go away. Hypothyroid, their, their metabolic rate is low and their body is not able to fight these infections, cancers, and pathogenicities. Uh, your skin is your real brain. Your skin, your receptors in your skin are bringing in all this information that is allowing your body to react to its environment. So your skin is your real brain. Your DNA is pretty dumb. Your DNA is like a library with a lot of books in it. So if you don't open the books, they're useless. It is the environmental stimuli that your skin collects that cause things to be, books to be opened up, read, the right proteins to be synthesized, the right anti-cancer genes to be activated. So you want to pay attention to your skin. Don't put fluoride, chloride, bromide on your skin. Get lots of sunshine. Put bacteria on your skin so that you can make vitamin D. People with hypothyroidism have very low vitamin D levels. If you have low vitamin D levels, suspect hypothyroid. Um, if I want to take some magnesium, mm -hmm. which I understand is really good for you, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like soaking in a whole tub full of magnesium, can I just pour some magnesium in a bottle, mm -hmm. shake it up, and then just put it on Absolutely. my skin? Yes, absolutely. You can get oil-based magnesium uh, ointments. Uh, uh -huh. Oil makes it much more soluble. Uh -huh. uh, you can put it in coconut oil, dissolve it in coconut oil, uh -huh. and apply it. Or you can eat it, or you can eat two cups of leafy greens in addition to all that. Uh -huh. Or oysters, very rich in magnesium. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, so magnesium will help with a lot of different things yeah. as well. Hair. Outer third of eyebrows. There, there are people with hypothyroidism is so severe, they have one little spot of eyebrows here. The rest is all drawn with a pencil. So if you have that outer third, that's hypothyroidism. Head hair thins. Uh, initially, it goes from regular to fine, thin, straight, dry, to in the later stages, it becomes very coarse. It becomes very coarse and severe hypothyroidism. There's a gradual loss of hair from your lower legs and armpits and your pubic area. So people with hypothyroidism just in their 60s, 70s, 80s just lose all this hair. Um, and these, uh, you have abundant hair when you're younger and when it disappears, suspect hypothyroidism. It's interesting because I remember when um, the hair on my legs mm -hmm. kind of disappeared and people said, oh yeah, you've been wearing, because then it was at the time yes. when I was old enough that I was wearing stockings all the oh, time. Oh yes. And they say, oh, yeah, it's the stockings that are doing that. And everybody that had that happen was, the, oh, I don't have to shave my legs anymore. That's a nice Not thing. realizing that. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, in fact, that's funny. I should say, a couple of other people have said that the same thing. Uh, the leg hair disappeared. And they thought it was because of their pants rubbing on their legs or something. And they were delighted they didn't have to shave their yeah. legs. But that was probably the beginning of hypothyroidism. Wow. That's a long time ago. Yes. Carries on for 10, 20, 30 years and hits you in the latter part of your life. Muscles and nerves, fibromyalgia, severe muscle aches. You throw your back, you know, you fall down, tend to fall down more. Uh, you, uh, you have Charlie horses at night, severe cramping. Uh, so not just potassium chloride, salt, and magnesium, but iodine, selenium, zinc, and thyroid hormone if you're hyper. Nails. If you have toenail fungus, you're almost certainly hypothyroid. Ingrown toenails. Pale, yellowish, brittle, rich, striated nails. Suspect hypothyroidism. Untreated. Lots of iodine. Lots of selenium. Eat Brazil nuts for selenium. Eat oysters for zinc and magnesium. Eat good food, but treat your um, thyroid. I've recently changed to an iron uh, pan from, you know, mm -hmm. Can you get too much iron? No, 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 no yes. not if you, generally speaking in hypothyroidism, you find women have low iron, 
or their uh, blood cells are not able to uptake iron as much, so you want iron. Okay. Typically, you see iron deficiency in anemia and hypothyroidism. Uh, there is a disease which is iron storage disease, but you don't have it for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so eat away in the in the cast iron pot. You will get lots yeah. of iron. Um, ice impaired ability to convert. Uh, beta carotene. So you can't just eat carrots. You gotta eat vitamin A if you're hypothyroid, because you're a beta carotene. And this is what happens with vegans a lot. You find macular. I have people in my family who are almost vegan. Macular degeneration. Lots of cataracts. They eat tons of carrots, but the carrots are not converting to uh, to vitamin A because they have familial hypothyroidism. Their body's not. That's so a 19-step process. That means you have to take a pill, a vitamin A? Or eat foods like liver or pâtés oh. that are rich in, in vitamin A. I see. And for vegans, I would recommend a real a cod liver oil or real vitamin A. Mm -hmm. But but you got to be able to convert the beta-carotene to vitamin A to have good eye health. Uh, poor circulation in your eyes, no vitamin A, you have myxedema, around in your eye tissue, glaucoma, cataracts, blepharitis, you know, dry eye, mucus, it, there's all sorts of problems. Conjunctivitis, you shed your eyelashes. Oh, I have none left at all. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> if you have shed your eyelashes, yeah. you're definitely hypo. Eye muscles are impaired, so sometimes you have difficulty blinking your eyelids. You know, there's a disease where people have to lift their eye. Oh. Uh, yes, eye muscles yes. like that to be able to see. I have well, to do that. Yes, yes. Hypothyroid medication. Uh, you have uh, pre -or suborbital fat masses. Um, if you if you have muscle uh, ataxia, consider testing your thyroid. Don't assume the test results are accurate. If you feel better, you're hypothyroid. Uh, shed eyelashes. A lot of people used to have thick, beautiful eyelashes disappeared. Hypo. Eye muscles are impaired, difficulty opening eyes, shutting eyes, moving your eyelids up and down. So where does arthritis, you know, you say fingers swollen, but where does arthritis fit into this? Arthritis is, uh, uh, again, mucopolysaccharides in your joints. So they, have, this is all connective tissue. Your joints are connective tissue. And when, when uh, glycosaminoglycans accumulate in the connective tissue, you have problems with your joints. or And you get plump fingers. Many times people have plump extremities. Um, tinnitus. Everyone knows what tinnitus is. Ringing. Okay. <laughs> you know it very well. Ringing in your ears. Vertigo when you can't stand or you think it's low blood pressure. It's really inner ear problems. Fluid buildup in your inner ear and that can be taken down with the appropriate medication. Your ear canal itself is dry, skilly, itchy. You get frequent ear infections when children have frequent ear infections suspect thyroid problems. Um, oh, we already went over all that. Yeah. Okay. Teeth and gums. So you find people with hypothyroidism have gums that are thick and come between the teeth because the gums are filled with mucin. They have diminished immunity in their mouths. They tend to a lot of cavities and infections in their mouth. They have impaired ability to repair damaged tissues and they have jaw muscle spasms. If you have people you know with TMJ, mm, clenching muscles at night or grinding of the jaw, suspect thyroid problems or overdeveloped gums because, and they have, they, and people with dental disease tend to have more heart disease. And why is that? If you have, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying because, um, in the mouth and so on, everything is directly connected through the blood supply and all to the heart directly, yeah. So it's a double whammy. You're getting infections from pathogens in your mouth, and which can travel directly to your heart. And if you're hypothyroid, because you're hypothyroid, you have hyperplasic heart, which is your heart is bogged down with, with this polysaccharide. And so it's very hard for it to do its job. So heart attacks are very common in people with dental disease, and there's a good reason for it. Um, uh, I keep hearing from a lot of people, 
hey, I'm 70 years old and I've been eating out of cans, I don't eat organic, <laughs> and I lived just fine, uh, but you did, you accumulate environmental toxicity, maybe it was less in the early going, more later, but the more toxicity you accumulate, the more you're going to knock out your thyroid. It's very, very sensitive. Amalgams, mercury, nickel, cadmium, tin, anything metallic in your mouth is going to come down and intoxicate your thyroid. Uh, triclosan in your to Colgate toothpaste has chlorine in its center. will knock, down your, knock out your thyroid. Fluoridated toothpaste, gel can, the anti-sensitivity, uh, sensodyne, all of these. Um, and, yeah. Things like the, uh, sardines and tuna and uh, mackerel, they're all, they come in tin cans. To, you know, yeah, yeah. Some come in bottles. Some come in jars. Some come in jars. Some yeah. of them. Yeah. Try the ones with jars. The tin is metal. Uh, if they're lined with plastic, they're bisphenols, which have again chlorine at their center. Polyvinyl chloride has chloride, chlorine at the center, and they are massive, massive disruptors of your thyroid, your adrenals, your estrogen, your progesterone, all your endocrine system. Because, uh, you know, I've always heard that sardines were so wonderful for They me. are, yes, yes. And, but I've, I just realized I eat them out of a tip from a tin. Yes, yes. They, they do sell them in bottles. Yes. So pardon? They do sell them in bottles. Yeah. They, you, know. you can get jarred sardines, jarred anchovies. You can get fish that's, you know, pretty freshly caught. But played by ear. You know, you have to look at the nutritional benefits of sardines and the keeping power of a can with the toxicity, but I would say where possible eat fresh meats, fresh fresh foods, if you can find them. And you can find frozen sardines, which are pretty good too. Oh. Yeah, and they're and the, about fresh, the same you price. You can find fresh sardines at fish markets sometimes. Oh, oh yeah, and they're not expensive, they're like no. five, six bucks a pound. Actually, actually yeah, they're, they're pretty cheap. Yeah. They're cheaper than canned sardines, yes, yes. Uh, all your anti-fracture medicines, all the, um, you know, things that prevent hip fractures and so on are made of fluoride. What does fluoride do? It suppresses your thyroid. Antacids. Anything that's extended release, anything that's buffered, contains aluminum, which suppresses your thyroid. Water, chlorinated for if, By the time you've eaten, drunk, chlorinated, fluoridated water for 30, 40 years, you're going to get, you're going to be hypothyroid. Guaranteed. So all the young women especially who are... 30, 40 today, my daughter's age, they're going to start to see symptoms of hypothyroidism. Um, so it's critical that they drink good water. Uh, transformers, so PCBs, huge damage, dioxin, and there's a biomagnification, right? So a little phytoplankton eats that, and then a fish eats the phytoplankton. It can go from 250 times to 500 times to 45,000 times. This is uh, from the book, Our Stolen Future. So the magnification of pesticides as you go up the food chain is high. So if you want to eat fish, eat fish low on the food chain. Don't eat the giant tuna fish, which might be loaded with mercury. The herring gulls have 25 million times the biomagnification of some of these organic foods. And they're small. Yeah. Herring. Yeah. Because they eat the, eat the fish that eats the plants. Uh, air. Lead, the nuclear fallout, it's going to displace your iodine. And so if there is a Chernobyl, pre please keep as an emergency measure blue balls. 12 milligrams of blue balls will be enough to uh, put a, take away the effect of 97% of the radioactive damage, radioactivity damage to your thyroid. So what they'll, the iodine will do is it will grab your thyroid. I'll just buy blue balls. How does what? How do you spell Lugol? L-U-G-O-L-S. And what are they? Uh, Lugol's is iodine, two types of iodine. It's a 2.5% solution, and you can buy it on Amazon for like 10 bucks. But it's it's one of the one of the few supplements I would recommend. In but you need selenium along with that. You do need selenium Important. with it, yes. You Which means it. just eat some Brazil nuts? Yes. No. Is that enough? That's enough. Four Brazil nuts will get you roughly, or eat good food, you know, nutrient-rich, uh, but the iodine is missing in food, so you really need iodine.
um, food. Soy is a goitrogen. Soy shuts down your thyroid. Not only is it genetically modified and loaded with Roundup, and so one of the things that a lot of vegetarians are eating today is soy, and you find an epidemic of hypothyroidism in this. So it's like soy nuggets, soy cheese, soy chicken nuggets, soy bacon. It's full of toxic stuff. It's genetically modified. It's got pesticides in it, and soy in and of itself it has isoflavones that suppress your estrogen, that suppress your, uh, kill your thyroid, really. And soy oil is used a lot oh, in yes. foods because oh, yes. it's cheaper. Yes. Canola oil, soy oil, corn oil, fat. Uh, a lot of the toxins are concentrated in fats. So it's super, super important to eat high quality fats. Mother's milk has glyphosate. Mother's milk has mercury. So it's really important when you eat milk fats, butter, lard, tallow, buy local in our county. It's the least contaminated. There's no industry here. So Strauss butter is very clean as opposed to butter from, you know, Pennsylvania or Cleveland or wherever the industries are. So, Illinois. So, Illinois. Illinois. There Kerry you go. Gold butter is okay. Uh, Kerrygold is not what it's cut out to be. I will send you some information. No. I would buy local at all times where you can actually go see the cows of the farmer and know that they're eating grass 80% oh. of the time. Yeah, something um, just came out about yeah. Kerrygold. Kerry that is too also. bad because it tastes so good. Yes, yes. It's really uh, good. They are good. largely factory cows. They're not on green pasture. They bring them in. Uh, grass. They, they advertise them yes. that they're, they're not grass-fed. They're grass-fed, but they're, they are grass-fed in a factory. Oh. And there's a lawsuit pending against Kerrygold for yeah. making false advertisements. Yeah. Oh. So I would go with local uh, fat products because, to my mind, Marin has some of the best. I'm running out of my vodka. Oh, no! <laughs> okay. So how do I... Yes. Why is no? Buy Strauss butter. Buy Strauss butter. Next year, got buy a bigger amount. <coughs> um, organic pesticides, herbicides, arsenic, dioxins, PVC, which is plastics, bromides and new cars, cushions, flowers, <coughs> water, drugs like Fosamax, antidepressants, aluminum cans, DDT, glyphosate, hexachlorobenzene, phthalates, all the ripening gases on your fruit. All stores use the ripening gases all suppress your thyroid and your entire endocrine system. Even on organic food? Food. Even on organic food. It should never be gas. It should mm. never be gas. Fosamax, what is that for? Fosamax is to, they give it to people with fragile hips or osteoporosis or osteopenia. Will depress your thyroid and cause, and not only will it not cure your osteoporosis, it will give you hypothyroidism and cause the downstream effects of uh, hypothyroid, such as heart attacks. Um, and what do they do? These endocrine disruptors from our environment destroy your thyroid, your testosterone, estrogen, adrenals, <coughs> they impair all of them. <coughs> In children, um, there's something called EIP, which is, I don't know what it stands for, but it's the special ed classes in schools are bursting at the seams. They've taken money away from the gifted groups, programs, the arts, the sports, and all of it is going to to get children into special education. So, you know, 50 plus percent of our students today have symptoms that are related to toxicity from their environment. They're trying to, you know, Lowell High School in San Francisco has always been a really tough high school and good high school. You could come from anywhere in the city to go there if you have the grades. They're trying to change that. Um, They're trying to lower the standards yeah. so that more people can go to Lowell. Wow. Uh, which is, I mean, you know, yeah. it's the dumbing down of America. Yeah, yeah. The SAT scores are lower. I mean, everything, has, yeah. IQ has dropped. Yeah. Um, but when you're pregnant, if you do your iodine and everything, your baby is going to be much brighter. Much brighter. IQ-wise. IQ. Many, many points brighter. So pregnant ladies out there, eat lots of iodine, seaweed, and good fats in your pregnancy.
Cretinism. Everyone knows what cretinism is. It's no. one of the biggest effects of iodine deficiency worldwide. Short stature, very short legs, that's moderate cretinism. Add to that mental retardation when it's severe. Flat feet, ears are lower on the neck than normal, so it looks like you have no neck to speak of. Um, swollen, ear canal is dry, scaly, itchy, your knock knee, flat footed. Neuronal, de neuronal development is impaired. It keeps you from developing myelin sheet. Um, much easier, but these people with uh, cretinism have a much faster glaucoma, cataracts, uh, conjunctivitis. They're missing eyelashes a lot. Um, and eye muscles, of course, are impaired. Uh, so this is one of the most preventable diseases in childhood or worldwide. All you got to do is get 10 bucks worth of blue gauze, eat a couple of drops a day. You will prevent severe derangement in your unborn child. Um, iodine is part of your thyroid. Absolutely. 